All right, all right. Today we're going to do weekly technical analysis. So we'll look at the weekly charts of all of the indices. And keep in mind on weekly charts, every candlestick is one entire week's worth of price action. So a lot of the analysis on these charts is likely going to take months to play out. So first, let's look at the weekly chart of SPY. And in that very first red week at the end of July, we had a very impulsive sell off. And I said there's a good chance from there we could be heading back down towards the support trend line and critical support zone at SPY 430 by sometime in early October. Now, I also said nothing moves in straight lines, so it's possible we come down, bounce back up towards 450, and then go reach 430. And so far, it does look like that is largely what is playing out. So into August, we had that sell off and then we bounced into the end of August and early September. And now we have two more red weeks of selling, which could mean we are heading down towards 430 over the next couple of weeks to finish out the month of September. Now, one thing I want to caution you against is just assuming because I drew an arrow to 430 that it means it has to happen. I think there's a very high probability it could happen to finish out this correction and then we'll start higher towards by 480. However, as you can see, I do have this trend line drawn and in order to assume we're going to 430, we will have to break support at 442. So there's going to be three critical support levels from the weekly chart that if you want to pay attention to, write them down. And that is going to be SPY 442. If we break SPY 442, we'll likely go down towards 436. And then if we can't hold support at 436, we are very likely going to 430. So for that reason, I think those are the three most critical support levels that I would hone in on, especially if you're a swing trader. If you're a day trader, there's a lot more supports that you could probably pay attention to. But looking at weekly charts and more of a macro multi-month move, I think those are your three critical support levels. Now, if we start to rock it out of here and we bounce from this support and don't break below it, the critical resistance remains up here at 451 and the previous weekly high right around 457. So 451 and 457 need to break. And once those break, we are very likely going to 480 because we have one of those blue skies charts where above that resistance, we have no more resistance until we get to the previous all time high. So once we break and start closing above 457, we're likely going straight to 475 and then 480. Now keep in mind, it's a lot better to assume we're going lower and then wait for the breakout because price action needs to prove everything. So right now we're really in a weekly range between 442 and 451. And the break of that range is going to tell us whether we're going to 430 or 480. Now also keep in mind, if we do go to 430, we need proof we're bouncing from there because if we lose the support trend line and critical support zone at 430, then this whole entire bull trend is now in jeopardy of being over with and we could be heading into a bear trend. So 430 is that line in the sand between a bull trend and a bear trend. And as long as we hold that line in the sand, we are still bullish. So just a quick recap, this is a weekly chart and this is going to take at least two to three more weeks before we find out if we're going to break this support and go to 430. And that is going to require the break of 442 and then the break of 436. The bullish scenario is that we bounce immediately off 442, break the high at 451, then break the high at 457, and then we're well on our way towards the previous all-time high. That is the very simple way to follow price action on the weekly chart. So that is the bear scenario and the bullish scenario. And all you need to do is write a trade plan of how you're going to react to the price action, whether we break support or break resistance. And as long as you're prepared for either scenario, you couldn't care less if we go higher or lower because you're prepared for either direction. Once you learn to be prepared for either direction, the market moves, you couldn't care less if it goes higher or lower. That is the benefit of being a trader and not an investor. An investor is hoping the market goes higher and higher and they're buying as it goes lower and lower. But a trader could make money in either direction as long as you have a disciplined approach and a proper risk management strategy. So next we'll throw the indicators on the chart and you can see we still have all of the bullish momentum from all of the RSI, MACD, and Bollinger Band squeeze indicators. And remember the MACD crossover does not matter unless we lose the weekly 20 period moving average, which is that critical support right around 437 to 436. MACD is still above zero and this temporary crossover could simply mean that we're just finishing this pullback before we go higher and the weekly RSI is still above 50. So all of this momentum is bullish until we lose critical support. And if we lose critical support, then we would expect to see the momentum indicators favoring the bears. And that means we're going to lose critical support and continue into a bear trend. Next up, we'll take a look at the weekly chart of the triple Qs and we can see the triple Qs are essentially in the same exact boat as spy. We're still above the rising 20 period moving average. We still have bullish momentum across the board and we're still above critical support 
support right around 357 to 360. Now the weekly breakdown will be the breakdown below about 369 and that will confirm we've likely seen a lower high pivot which means we're coming back down to critical support. So watch that very critical weekly support at 369 and the critical resistance will be the break above 378. 369 breakdown is bearish the break of 378 is bullish and then above 378 we could push all the way back to the previous all-time high right around 406. So there's really no reason to be bearish yet. We still have a lot of bullish momentum and a very strong bull trend. The only thing we're trying to figure out is whether we are going to get one more pullback to finish this correction, or if we're already done with the pullback and this is just simply another higher low before we attempt to break out. All of the odds are still in the bull's favor until we lose those critical support zones, which I've already given you. So just watch the price action and plan accordingly. Jumping over to the Dow Jones weekly chart, we had this other price action pattern that I want you to pay attention to, which is this weekly inverse head and shoulder as long as we're above the neckline breakout at 342 on the weekly chart. Remember, we had the breakout, and then typically when you get a breakout, you want to see a successful retest, which means you come back down to the breakout to test it as support. And then if you get a successful bounce off the retest, that's usually going to be your all clear that the buyers are motivated and they are going to continue to push higher. So the critical support in the Dow on the weekly chart remains 342. And the critical resistance is going to be the break above 355. Now, in the short term, we need to break 350. And then if we break 355, we're well on our way towards the projection of the price target, which is 370. And yes, I do think we can get there before the year is over or very early next year, as long as we are above this critical support at 342. So the Dow Jones is in a very bullish configuration until it breaks down below 342. And if it does break down below 342, this is going to look like a lower high, lower low rejection. And that means you're going to have critical resistance at 350, which the bears will use as their risk level as they attempt to break support at 342. So there is a bearish scenario you need to be prepared for. That's why I'm giving you the critical support levels. That way, if they break down, you know how to manage your risk. And then you know to look for that next leg lower in the bearish probabilities. So 350 is critical resistance and 346 is critical support. So next, let's go ahead and throw on the indicators. So on the indicators, we still see the weekly RSI is above 50. The MACD is still above zero, even though we are getting the crossover. We have not yet lost that critical support. And we still have the Bollinger Band squeeze, which is very bullish because when you get a Bollinger Band squeeze, eventually that energy is going to be released. And there's a high probability it's going to be released to the upward direction if we're above a rising 20 period moving average, which we still are. There is a scenario where that energy is released to the downward direction, but that's going to require the price action to break critical support and confirm a bear trend. So pay attention to that Bollinger Band squeeze because it's a weekly squeeze, which is very powerful. And you want to know whether we're above or below the support, because if we break support, then you need to get risk off and prepare for more downside. And then jumping over to the IWM Russell 2000 weekly chart, we can see we are still sitting right around this critical support at 183. We are in jeopardy of losing the bullish momentum because the RSI is currently just a hair below 50. The MACD is just a hair above zero and we have the Bollinger Band squeeze on the weekly chart. So if the RSI continues below 50 and the MACD crosses below zero and we start to release this energy to the downside, I do think there's a good chance we'll come down to the bottom of the range right around 170 or the previous low at 164. However, I do want to see 183 breaking as support because this is a very strong support and you can see there is a very large volume shelf at this level, which means there is a lot of buying going on around this zone. So if we break below it, that's bearish and we'll likely fill that air pocket in the volume shelf, which will easily take us down to the daily gap fill right around 176. So 183 is critical support and the break of resistance we need to see is above 191 and then 197. Above 197, it's full bull into the 220. So if you simply want to wait for the break of 197, that's completely fine. But if you don't mind buying low while you have a low risk entry, Entry, that's going to be down here right around 183 knowing if we break below that you need to get risk off and take your small loss before it gets larger you can also see on the options flow we are getting large bets to the upside and we currently have a 2.1 million premium for the 185 calls expiring October so it's not all bearish there is things to be concerned about but we are still at critical support and we're above support until we're not so if we break support, that's your sign to get a little more risk off and then wait for more confirmation. And then finally, I do want to go ahead and take a look at the weekly chart of the financial sector because a lot of the bear market concerns are due to inflation and things the Fed are doing. And a lot of that is going to stem on whether or not the financial companies are healthy, which is obviously your big banking sector. So looking at the XLF weekly chart, we could see price action still above a rising weekly 20 period moving average. RSI is still above 50. MACD is above zero with a positive histogram. And we are currently two weeks into a bullish squeeze firing to the upside, which means we could push to the top of this range just below 37. So I don't see anything on the chart of the financials that tells us we need to panic. 
We have bullish momentum. We're above critical support, which is right there at 34. And as long as we have bullish momentum and we're above critical support in a bullish configuration, it does look like the banking sector is relatively healthy. I don't care about what the news says or what any of the narratives say because I only get my information from the charts. And the chart of the financial sector is currently in a bullish configuration telling me it's likely going to continue to push higher. The last thing we saw was a pullback to the rising weekly 20 period moving average, and now we're getting a bounce, and there is nothing bearish about bouncing off of a rising weekly 20 period moving average. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this is going to be a very important finish to the month of September because we are currently sitting at critical support, and we know the back half of September is typically bearish and very volatile. So if we lose support, prepare for that trip down to 430, but if we hold support and break resistance, we're well on our way to the previous all-time highs. So let the chart do all the talking, be prepared for the bearish and the bullish scenario, and that way you couldn't care less whether we go higher or lower, you are simply going to be reacting to your plan. Get your plan together right now, that way going into next week when we have FOMC, you'll simply be reacting to your plan and not your emotions. We are absolutely crushing this market on the Stock Channel Discord server and Bank Trade Alerts, and you can still claim the Labor Day sale on Bank Trade Alerts by simply entering the coupon codes I'll put in the description below. So thank you for watching everybody, I hope you're crushing this market, and as always, I will see you in the next episode.